uh, and p of x when when we go to evaluate it okay uh, is x is an integer is the question that's been asked and when it comes to a specific value well then the specific value is passed in for x here and then this becomes an actual proposition which is either true or false so this particular thing we could say let's say p of 4 p of 4 is actually true because 4 is an integer okay uh, <clears throat> let's say actually let's let's change the domain of this course okay instead of talking about the integers okay let's actually change it to the to the real numbers okay so when we change the domain of this course to the real numbers okay uh, well we can still 4 is a real number and p of 4 well 4 is an integer so that's still true but we could also now check out something like maybe a uh, p of pi Okay, in this case we're being asked is pi uh, pi is an integer, which is which is false. Uh, pi is is not an integer, and in fact is a, is an irrational number. Okay, uh, so we can we can we can we can do these things all day long. Like I mean, have let's have you can see q is quite similar here to what we actually had a moment ago. So actually, technically p and q, if the domain of this course is the same, p and q are actually the same predicate. Okay, it's just that they've they have they have uh, they have different values uh, uh, assigned to the to to the ver to the variable. Okay, uh, let's have a look at or. Okay, and let's convert or to a predicate. Now there'll be many ways to do this. Okay, but what we could do is we could create another predicate. Let's say or. Okay, and what or does is or takes an x value, and let's say the domain of this course is 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 also the integers. So the domain of this course is the integers. Okay, and uh, or is basically that x is greater than three. Okay, so we could we could have this particular predicate now. Okay, because when we pass in an x value here. Okay, so let's say when we evaluate or of four. What we actually get is that four is bigger than three, and the important thing here is that this is a proposition now, proposition, okay, which is which is in fact which 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 is which which is true. We could pass in a uh, or of minus five, okay, and the the predicate then becomes minus five is bigger than three. Once again, you can clearly see this is a proposition, proposition. So what we actually have, the proposition is actually, in fact, false. The most important thing is that the, the function itself, the predicate function, takes inputs. And from the inputs, it evaluates a proposition okay, and assigns either a true or false value to that, particular, to, that particular, uh, to that particular input or to the proposition that was evaluated at that particular input. Okay? Uh, we could have changed this maybe to be a different function. Let's say, uh, let's say or of x. Let's call this, let's say, uh, or prime of x y. Okay, so this function now, this predicate function, has taken two inputs, and what's being asked here is that x is bigger than x is bigger than y. Once again, the domain of this course is important, so we could actually say, let's say that x's and y's are elements of the integers, okay? uh, and now we can start to evaluate this particular predicate function. Okay? So you can actually see that or prime of 4, 3, uh, well, from a propositional perspective, when we assign into the predicates the actual values that are input, this becomes 4 bigger than 3, uh, which actually is, in fact, which is in fact false. Okay, uh, we could say or prime passing in minus minus two and minus seven. Okay, the predicate then becomes minus two is bigger than minus seven, which is in fact true. Okay, the important point I'm trying to make here is that predicates don't have to simply take a single input. Uh, they can take more than more than one input. Okay. Uh, as their as as their as their as their as their variables. Okay, guys. Uh, so if you're going to take anything away from here, okay, effectively what we're saying is that predicates are simply functions, okay. And like all functions, we have to understand the do their domain. That's the inputs that we're going to pass into them, and we also have to understand where they're going to be mapped to, okay. And for predicates, okay, the predicate functions, okay. Uh, once again, they have they have this prototype, yeah, okay, uh, that tells us uh, what to do, okay, uh, and what to t what to test for, okay. So we choose values from our domains, 
we pass them into our predicate and the predicate then is evaluated okay if the predicate actually then becomes a proposition uh, once we have the specific value okay and that proposition then is evaluated evaluate to either true or false so effectively it's a function mapping domain values into range values but the range is the set of that contains true and and also contains contains false okay guys once again, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert of the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video, which is uh, just really trying to trying to just uh, get across this concept of what a, what a propositional function stroke predicate is, I hope that this was in some way intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.